Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to have you here with us in London for the Film Festival. If you could begin with an introduction to your film and tell us a bit about, about what audiences can expect. Hi, my name is uh, Shasta Helen Rasmussen and I'm the director, writer of uh, Nightmare. It's uh, like a psychological horror film about uh, the Nordic uh, nightmare demon called the Mare. It all started with me being inspired by this word, uh, nightmare and uh, researching nightmare demons around the world, uh, all describing the same experience uh, in sleep. It's basically your experience in sleep paralysis, where you are paralyzed in your sleep, uh, but your brain is awake. And you see this shadow in the door coming against you and pressuring on your chest and you can't breathe. I found it so fascinating that it's the same experience all over the world in different cultures and different regions and they all have their own nightmare demon like a name in english it's nightmare like the mare the word is there and in french cauchemar the word is there so yeah i elaborated more on the demon and giving him a plan i won't say too much but uh, he has a plan but it's also a film about a young couple uh, moving into an apartment their first apartment you know they're 25 uh, they're at that stage in life, uh, the next phase is starting, you know, should she go for the career, should she go for a family? So I have a very strong female lead, but she's kind of in a limbo, she doesn't know. And she's feeling all that pressure and expectations that a young woman will today feels. And she doesn't really know what she wants to do in her life. So it's also a film about their relationship. So when she moves in, she starts having intense dreams and they uh, develop into nightmares and yeah the demon as i said has a plan with her so it, both her her dreams and her reality starts to blur so the dreams the nightmares are having a huge impact on her real life as well and she has to do uh, yeah she has to fight in her dreams against this uh, this demon. Can you tell us a bit about your role in the film and you know what the appeal of the whole project was for you? Yes, uh, I play Robbie, which is our uh, lead's boyfriend, which is the straightest guy in cinema history. Just an environmentalist, very nice, down-to-earth guy. But when she starts having these dreams where there's uh, scary stuff happening, and she she's she is dreaming about someone that looks looks uh, very much alike, like Robbie. That version of Robbie is 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 harsh and much more. Uh, much meaner and almost like way too dominant at one point. So uh, so I, I get to do two parts. One really nice Robbie and one really weird mean Robbie. It was fantastic. And and how did you decide on your cast and, and how did you work with them to kind of achieve your vision for the film? Yeah, casting is, um, is a process, but um, Harman Tomos, he was attached uh, really early, which was great to have him there so I could find my female lead, so yeah. Uh, I think casting is, in general, very um, hard. <laughs> and it's a process, you know, it takes time. I was looking for, in Herman, the, the ability to do both. You know, be a really innocent, boyish character, but also being able to be really, really stern and hard. And, not, you know, as, as the demon in, this, in the, the nightmares, you don't say much. So it had to be in the eyes, it had to be in the posture. And a little bit same with uh, Aile Harbo, which is... Uh, the female lead, she's uh, magical, <laughs> she's so good, uh, because she has that kind of face, I can, s I can stare at for hours, because there's something going on behind her eyes all the time, she's just, this, and this is a part where she's, yeah, there's a lot of internal things going on, so I needed a, f a face, an energy that speaks to you without many words, and um, I found that, and I was, I was lucky. And for, for each of you, was there a particular scene that was most difficult to pull off? Or on the other side of that, uh, a real highlight? So in a movie like this, where I'm doing two characters, uh, and both of them have emotional scenes and, and angry scenes and sad scenes and a lot of stuff going on, the most challenging, without a doubt, was acting with a 10-week-old baby. For me, at 25, never held a baby in my life. That was challenging as heck. I mean, I had a two-hour course with our our intimacy uh, coordinator with a doll just to practice how to hold it up, right? It was terrifying. Then every time it moved, I was like, I'm going to break his legs. So it was just, 
terrifying. But it was fun, and we uh, it was interesting, and, and I learned a lot about how it is to act with this, a baby that age, because you have to... There's very specific rules on how long you can shoot and how long the breaks needs to be and the parents need to be there, of course. But lucky for us, the kid was a superstar that managed to pull off everything we wanted on like more or less first tries all the way through. So it went perfectly. That was the most challenging. Best experience though was in general working back and forth with Hjashti and Aili and with every single scene we did. She gave us a lot of creative freedom to do and create what we wanted with the characters. At the same time, whenever we went, went way too far away from the story, she would just drag us back to what we were supposed to do. So it was a good back and forth. Yeah, that was a very good uh, collaboration. Didn't need much direction, really. Uh, but we did, you know, talk about things before we started shooting. And I, I came from screenwriting. I've been a screenwriter for 10, 15 years. So for me, it would, the biggest challenge was, you know, I had I directed short films before, but. Uh, a feature film is much cute, bigger and longer, so I wasn't sure how I was going to deal with that. But I uh, actually I loved it, so I hope I can. <laughs> I hope it's a really good experience for me, and I hope I can um, make more films in the future. <laughs>